Don't want him. Let me do want him. Her postman. Her postman. Reporting live. Reporting live. It's the hood postman, come and check the program You ain't from the streets, this is something you should know man Running from police, got a grip the wheel with both hands Speeding down the interstate, please do not approach him 40's in the fridge, got the caddy in the driveway Get all out of my face, I don't wanna violate Looked up in the mirror and I told myself why wait we Took this shit worldwide, you only in five states Came from the four corners with my four quarters Showed them the style, then they stole on us Times got wild, then they told on us Dog, it was hard, but we had to keep it rolling You ain't gotta ask, you know where to find me I be in the back streets where it get grimy It's just me and Mel, Renny looking broad D I be going hard till I'm in the five C's uh. Know the vibes I'ma do it till I die I ain't never switched sides I ain't never had to tell a lie Let's ride Know the vibes Shout out, shout out, shout out to the Melrose Goons and the Melrose Nation. I am Professor Melly Mel, the Hood Post fan. This is not a glorification, this is an education. You can go anywhere in the world and hear the lies, but you came here for the truth, and the truth you shall receive. Once again, be sure to click the notification bell, like, subscribe, and share. Drop a comment down below so when the dope content hit, It'll feel like it's the first and the 15. Shout out to you, man. Welcome. Welcome, Jay Ship. What's up, man? We in the mailroom, bro. After that fiasco Friday, you we got trolls. We got people coming, <laughs> doing all the same. But let me clear something up. Mike Marks wasn't the guilty party. He was not the guilty party. Um, we're still trying to narrow that down as to what happened. Um, actually... There's a lot of people that's um, trolling these internets and, and for various reasons, I guess they be bored. I don't know. And they decided to to create a avatar that looked like Mac, Mike Mark's avatar. And uh, I clicked on it to bring him in to, you know, to say a couple of words or whatever. And it turned out to be a troll. And you guys saw the result of that. So beginning and again, we just want to clear Mike and move forward and, and you know, and be more uh conscious and pay attention to what's coming in, you know, because sometimes when I drop a link in the uh, description or I drop a link in the, in the chat, they able to grab that link. And then if they're crafty enough, or clever enough, they can create something that make me think it's somebody other than what they're, you ain't the only one. Kev and Bam both had huge trolls on it. All right. Yeah. Shout out to Mike, man. Mike's in there. There you go. <laughs> Your whole chat and viewers want to all to know that Mike Marks does not act or do crazy on the YouTube. Melly Mill is my God. I would never get any one panel or do. Yeah, and, and I and I double that, Mike. I double that. So we're here today. We're talking about, well, we're talking about the trolls, of course. But I want to bring to you guys another attention. Something that came across my peripheral, my vision, my view, all that. Right on, Mike. Right on, man. You good guy, man. There's a guy out of Colorado, right? His name is Clarence Clarence Moses L. Clarence Moses L. Kevin Samuels got trolls like that. That you know what? You're right, uh, uh, Aldridge, because that's why Kevin would always tell people, "I'm not bringing you on, lessing you show your face." See, and that's an important component right there. Always. Ask people to show their face because if they can't show their face, that means they got a hidden agenda or something attached to why they want to come on. And it can, you know, ultimately wreck your channel or because the responsibility is the person who owns the channel. So, yeah, we have to be careful of that. You know what I mean? Mike Marks is my guy. Uh, King Mike LX is my guy. So, hey, there it is there. There's nothing else to discuss. 
in regards to Mike. Other than that, he's a friend of the show. He's actually a moderator in the show, so he will continue in that capacity. And um, shout out to Texas, man. In Texas, H-E-B, here everything's better, or bigger. <laughs> yeah, well, anyway, so I want to bring this to your attention. I don't know you know about this already, because you usually be on top of this news, man. There was a brother out of Colorado, right? His name is Clarence Moses L. He was convicted and sentenced to 28 years in Colorado by a white for, for a white woman that dreamed he raped her. You guys heard me right. This white woman dreamed that this man raped her. Let me drop the clip for y'all because this this is this is just unbelievable. And and we think that we have uh, finally arrived in a space and time that where you know. Black people are not treated as demons, devils, and 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 all these bad things that you want to associate with being bad. But here we go. Let's listen. Turn now to the case of a Denver, Colorado man who has spent 28 years in prison based on a dream, and it wasn't his own. That's right. In 1989, Clarence Moses L., who was African-American, was sentenced to 48 years in prison after a woman said she dreamed he was the man who raped and beat her in the dark. The victim said she was raped in her apartment after a night out drinking at a party. She was beaten so badly during the attack that she suffered broken facial bones and lost the use of one eye. Initially, the victim named three men she had been drinking with as her possible attackers. None of them was Clarence Moses L. But police never investigated any of those men because a day and a half later, the victim said she had a dream that Moses L. was the one who had raped her. Since day one, Clarence Moses L. has maintained his innocence. In 1995, he won a court order to analyze evidence that could have proved his innocence. He persuaded his fellow prisoners to chip in $1,000 to pay for DNA testing. Denver police packaged the evidence, which included the victim's rape kit, her clothes and bed sheets, in a box and marked it do not destroy. But then the police threw the box in a dumpster. That's what we're dealing with, folks. Look at that. Look at that. And you think it's 2023 and, and, and we're supposed to be free and we're supposed to be able to, you know, do the things we love to do without, you know, without being ridiculed and, and all this other stuff, or accused of things that we didn't do. This is just, I, I thought it was, he was sentenced to 48 years. He did 28. You know, based on a woman, white woman dreaming. But all a white woman got to do is say that a black man did this. And I don't see, we got to, uh, uh, to get to my point, I, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to come back to my point, right? Because my point is about all these passport bros and all these different things uh, 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 that uh, brothers are now getting into. So, but I want you to understand a little bit in depth about passport bros, because there's another component attached to it that, that I don't think everybody's looking to. Okay. And uh, of course, whatever happened to his brother, uh, Clarence Moses L was just a man. That's a, that's a nightmare in itself. That ain't no dream. That's a nightmare. For the brother to wind up in such craziness, you know, and for these people to just the authorities that take it up because instead of having uh, 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 their emotions, they they lack the police often lack emotional discipline. They will do their job based on emotions because they felt like this woman, this white woman, is absolutely true, telling the truth, giving them all, providing them with all the information that they needed to prosecute this brother. And they sentenced this brother to 48 years based on a dream. And this woman says she dreamed that Brother Clarence Moses L. raped her. And that's what they pushed forward to. They've been doing that, boy, since... <laughs> Man, they've been doing it even before the end, brother. Before we even ride it. It all started way back in the second century. When they uh, the suppression of all information and all uh, history that related to black people, 
they suppressed all the information, burned down libraries and tore down, tried to tear down statues. We saw them shooting, shooting the nose off the Sphinx and all this different stuff. So they've been doing this for quite some time. This is this is nothing new. There's nothing new under the sun. It's been going on. Okay. But so I know Aldrich, you're gonna go look it up. <laughs> I know how you is. You gonna go look it up. <laughs> Yeah, they need to be punished, man, especially the ones that threw away all the evidence, you know. Can you imagine being in such a, that's such a complex web of deceit, lies, you know, like I said, you could, you can go anywhere in the world for the lies, but you come here to the hood postman for the truth. And the truth is what we believe in, regardless if it's our own people or some other people or there's just some things we're doing in the community that's just not right. In regards to the gang bang, you know how that a lot of individuals feel passionate about it. And, you know, nothing hurts me worse than to see a six-year-old man still saying cuz in blood. Or their actions and deeds reflect someone that's still like a, uh, you got dudes that say, I don't wear red, I don't wear blue. So the action of these reflect that they're still caught up in that cycle, that mindset. But nonetheless, passport bros, right? We got these brothers now going, they're going to Thailand, they're going to Brazil, they're going to the Philippines, they're going to Colombia, and they're going to the DR. Oh, you had heard about it on another channel right on, bro. Um so they're going to all these various places, right? And, and and supposedly they're looking for better situations and better outcome with women because they say the women here are too many. So the women here, they do have some, they do have some onus in this because a lot of the sisters, right? A percentage of them, because nothing is ever a hundred percent. These are generalizations, and generalizations usually don't cover a hundred percent of, of the thought or the information that's being presented. So they're saying that a lot of sisters here have uh, the alpha female and they talk all this, you know, they speaking from a uh, male energy and they have a lot of masculine energy and so on and so forth. So you got a lot of brothers now going to these places, to Thailand, to Philippines, to DR, Brazil, Colombia, looking for women. But what they want to understand is that, that they're just like the women here because they looking for a man with resources. That's that's just the, the fact of the matter. Now, they may be a little more humble. They may not be westernized and they may not be have all the things that come with Western cultural society. And, they, and they're going to play their hand. They're going to play their cards in regards to landing this man and be and find their way into the United States. But I guarantee you, if they hear long enough, they will assimilate to whatever the other women are doing. So they're saying the passport bros are saying that they die, they tired of it. They're tired of women not getting behind them. They're tired of women not being feminine, fine, feminine, and cooperative and, and fit and friendly. They're having problems with that. So they're going to these other places. So when I looked into it, I was against the passport bros movement from the beginning. Something is off with them socially and rationally. You're right. You touched on my point. So when I looked into it, right? I looked at, uh, let's take Brazil. The age of consent in Brazil is 14. The age of consent in Colombia is 14. The age of consent in the Philippines was actually 12. They raised it to 15, right? The age of consent in Thailand is 15. So in the age of consent in the DR, respectively, is 18. But it, what the R is actually in the Western, Northern Western Hemisphere, so they're under Western Hemisphere jurisdiction. So, but the thing about the Dominican Republic is that those sisters over there with the BBLs, they getting, you know, they got, that's their, that's their attraction to everything running over there because they, they right there with the BBLs are being done and the Botox and all this for, for maybe a third of the price maybe half of the price, maybe even a fourth of the price. I don't know. But I know it's cheaper than there than it is to get it done here. So when I looked at all that, because I started looking at it, so they actually, the United States created task force because they had another guys going over to these countries like the Phuket and Bangkok 
and all this Thailand to where these brothers is going over there. Not necessarily brothers, white men and all going over there and they looking for underage girls. So there's, there's a big pedophile attachment that's going along with this passport bro stuff, right? So everybody is looking at the, okay, they, they, they find some beautiful women over in all these different countries who have less Let's we'll say, let's not say they, they don't, they have all the, because they've been there, right? They've been associated with all these men in all these different countries coming over there for various reasons. So you can't say they virgins, right? But what I think they is, what they really, what they really relaxed in is getting behind a man and letting a man lead because these brothers are coming over there with resources and they're actually taking care of these women. So what you spend over here, you can actually probably get a flat over in Thailand for probably about two or three hundred dollars a month. And I'm talking about a nice, nice stuff that, you know, groceries is over there like it's twenty seven dollars a week or something like that. A whole where well, you would probably take three or four or five hundred here in the United States. It's probably like twenty eight dollars over there for uh, just a whole week of groceries, you know, so. Those are the difference. So a brother can take, if you got like 100 G's or two or 300 G's, you can go over there and literally live like a king and, and have those women at your beck and call. But you have to be careful as well because they got something over there which is called katoys. Katoys are, are uh, boy girls. And they really look, that the surgeries that they give them over there are like, man, they're just out of this world, you know. Mr. Sisters are dying, dying from them BBLs too. Yeah, that's true. That's true. They going over there. But see, and that's the problem with the sisters here is aesthetics. Where the men here are competing for resources, they competing for uh, competing against one another. They're not competing for men. They're competing for a certain look. And once they get that look, then the men that they're they're actually trying to get are in the top 10%. So you got 100% of the women in the United States going after the top 20% of men. So that leave 80% of the men that's out there, that's out there looking, you know what I mean? And then, because if you look at the statistics that you go to blackdemographics.com, I believe it's like more than 51% of young men are single and childless. 64% are in the middle class. This is just for black men. So what is that saying? What are these sisters? Because most of these sisters, when you ask them, what is their description of a man that they want? He's got to be a high top earner. He's got to be, you know, tall and handsome and all this stuff. But, but they got to look at themselves and see if what do they bring to the table that will get them that. You know, okay, you you look good, you look you look fine and all that. But is that enough to bring into the relationship? Because let's be honest, vagina is standard on each model. That doesn't make the lady any lady special than the other one. It's just dumb. But what makes them special is when they do have a cookbook or they do have certain things that they bring to the table that that a man likes and, 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 and he aspires. He's inspired by this woman, or a woman knows that a man is ego driven and she knows how to to stroke that ego and give him, you know, give him everything and make him feel like he's going out there conquering the world and come home and bring home plenty of money and take care of everything, you know, provider. Women and children and dogs are loved unconditionally. A man is loved on based the way he provides. You know, simple. Shout out to the sir. Fun day, Sunday, fun day, man. That's it, man. That's what we having over here, man. And hopefully we don't get no more of them trolls that come up here and disrupt. So yesterday I went to a, uh, a function uh, Rennie Globe was there. She was funny as usual, doing her jokes and stuff. And uh, my homeboy, Tanner Tut, was there. Coach Tut, he's a, a body, mind, and nutrition, fitness guru. I'm talking about guru on that, guru. I did a couple of videos on him. You can go back somewhere in my timeline and find them. But anyway, uh, he does the MMA. He does the the weight training, the cal the cardio and he gives, he gives you the nutrition factors to everything he's doing. So he has a great deal of clients, and, and, and uh, he's doing quite well. So we all got together, and we went to uh, – her name is Ma Didi. She gave her, uh, like, a, a panel. She went to have a panel discussion. It was at a nice 
uh, situation, uh, closed in with the pool inside the house and all that stuff. Um, uh, I'll probably drop a video later on about it. Actually, I did. I put up one, put up one with her talking. So it's all already down in the in the uh, timeline. So you guys go check that out. But yeah, I just want to tap in and make you guys aware that once again, let me show you this brother, man, because this is this is like, man, this I can't believe this. Let's get back on this. Right. Hold on. I couldn't believe when I heard this. Turn now to the case of a Denver, Colorado man who has spent 28 years in prison based on a dream. And it wasn't his own. That's right. In 1989, Clarence Moses L., who was African-American, was sentenced to 48 years in prison after a woman said she dreamed he was the man who raped and beat her in the dark. The victim said she was raped in her apartment after a night out drinking at a party. She was beaten so badly during the attack that she suffered broken facial bones and lost the use of one eye. Initially, the victim named three men she had been drinking with as her possible attackers. None of them was Clarence Moses L. But police never investigated any of those men because a day and a half later, the victim said she had a dream that Moses L. was the one who had raped her. Since day one, Clarence Moses L. has maintained his innocence. In 1995, he won a court order to analyze evidence that could have proved his innocence. He persuaded his fellow prisoners to chip in $1,000 to pay for DNA testing. Denver police packaged the evidence, which included the victim's rape kit, her clothes and bed sheets, in a box and marked it do not destroy. But then the police threw the box in a dumpster. So... <laughs> Man, and, and, and brothers talking about going overseas. If we getting treated like that in the States, how bad is it out the States? You know, so you got to be very careful of, of what you do and how you do it. You got to move with strategically. And uh, that's just it, man. You know, I don't know what to tell these brothers, you know what I mean? But they need to, you know. Stop the cap. Cap, stop the cap, cause what she do? What she belonged to the streets. Belong to the streets, man. So you gotta be, man, own it when you're dealing with these individuals, and make sure you're getting what you're getting, and understand that there's always something on the side or something coming out of off the backside that you do not see. So just be careful when you're out there doing whatever it is you do. And I just wanted to tell you guys, that's my piece for today. And hope that you guys are having a Sunday, fun day Sunday, because I know these football games, what time the football games come on? So I know you guys going to get into that. Oh, gee, are you still trucking? And are, yeah, I'm trucking worthy, giving a shot for a young man that is in there. This man always trucking, always looking to get somebody a shot, a shot, check it in, hit that, on the head, white men have been going overseas, sleeping with underage girls and boys for years. Yes, yes, that's what they've been doing. And But, you know, the United States supposedly had created a task force that was watching for these brothers, you know. But uh, a lot of these countries, the age of consent is anywhere from 12 years old to 15. A lot of them. So that's why a lot of these men go over there and, and really they're not they're not talking about it or they're not uh, uh, speaking about that part of it, but that's part of it too. Yeah, relationships, values are more important, sexual appearance. This is, should be, yeah, because again, and I'm going to go a little further, right? A lot of these women with this aesthetics, right? They're looking for, they got to understand there's a difference between intention and attention. Intention is when we find a man that intend to marry, you put a ring on it, whereas you be the maintainer of women and children, be a provider. Attention is what often women get because they over-sexualize themselves. And when they go out into the world, into the dunya, they over-sexualize. So they get, instead of getting a man intention, they get a man attention. And a man attention is his sexual prowess, is, is what he want to do because now you give him a, you're giving him a visual when he's just sitting there just thinking about, boy, I can have her. Look at her. You know, look, man, I'm thinking about what I can, you know, and all that. And uh, but they intent, but they wanted the intention. They wanted a man. Because, but, but when you overdo that, ladies, when you overdo that, 
You get the wrong type of man. And then you mad at the end when a man don't want to put a ring on it. And that's why you see all these sisters running in packs. You'll see four or five sisters running in a pack and won't see no man in sight. Because they all in that pack competing against one another instead of competing to get a man, to get a man that's going to be a provider, to get a man that's going to, you know, form a partnership. They talking about 50-50. There's no 50-50. It's 100-100. If I bring 100, lady, and you bring 100, we good. You understand? But if you're talking about just 50-50 stuff, both of us are leaving 50% somewhere else. Both of us. So you got to take that into account. And Deshaun, you're right, man. You're absolutely right. Salute to the whole postman. <laughs> it's right on to uh, Yeah, it ain't just white people. You're right. No, 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 no. We we already established that. It ain't just white people because now you've got what is known as passport bros. You know, of course, it's just not white people, but it's with all these passport bro stuff who's this thinking, you know, who thinks who will be the poster child of this underage stuff. And that's what's going to happen. That's my point. And that's why I bought the brother uh, Clarence Moses. L. Look how easy he 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 wound up with 48 years based on a white woman's dream. 48 years. Now that ain't so that's a mega to me, that's a mega lawsuit. I'm not saying that's what they're doing, bro. I'm just saying until it can be proven. <laughs> if you think it is not true, then that's on you. I mean, maybe you're a passport, bro, and maybe, you know, I don't know. But what I'm saying is that what seems fun may not be all that fun. Just because you see everybody doing something, don't make it right. Always think about it. Always flip the coin over and look at the backside of it, Lion's Time. You know, just think about it. We are already sick and tired just being, yeah, and, and, and that's my point, too. We're right. But how are, we, how are we negating to fix the problems here with our own women? Because here, here's the thing. Our women are the only group of women that's talking about this strong, black, and independent. How do we fix that? See, because the white women, they get with their men. The Asian women, they get with their men. The Chinese women, they get to the with their men. The Mexican women, they get with their men. Black women are only women that's talking about strong, black, and independent. Because most of them want, 100% of them want the top 20% men. That's not enough men for that. So what I'm saying is these sisters that are start learning, these PhDs and, and master degree sisters and all that, they got to start you know, coming down a little bit. Because here's the thing, a lot of them, a lot of them think that they're, um, that who they are as a person or, or, or how their they're, how their um, sexual marketplace, right, they overvalue themselves because it's almost like selling a used car for a new, at new car prices. How does that work? Lady, you've been on the market for a while. You've been, you've been on a lot. I understand that you look good. You might have this dynamic education and all that, but somehow you overpricing yourself. You just is, you know. So come down a little bit. 27, sell. Sell that, sell that stuff. You know what I mean? At, at the age 30, half price. <laughs> half price. Age 40, clearance rack. 50 and 60, used store. Goodwill. That's it. <laughs> that's, that's where they had on that sexual marketplace because you got to understand they don't have, they got children. What can they give a man that they ain't already gave to another man? So when they place themselves, but they placing their value based on their looks, based on the, uh, the aesthetics, based on the BBLs, and they look, I'm talking about they look fantastic. But that don't make them better on the inside. That's gonna take some generation. <laughs> I, I can't. I can't say I disagree with you on that one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
So that's facts, man. So anyway, I'm going to get up out of here, man. You guys enjoy your football. Who's playing today? Uh, that's uh, Buffalo, Cincinnati, and Dallas and the 49ers, man. Uh, I don't know that Dallas and 49ers. That's going to be – I think the 49ers might get them, though. I just do. If that don't have a – that got to have a, a great game. Yep. Yeah. You're right, Chris. You're right. You're right. You're right, man. But, you know, once again, man, Professor Melly Mel, the Hood Post, man, you can go anywhere else in the world for the lies, but you came here for the truth. And that's why I provide. I provide the truth, you know, whether it's whether it's good or bad, you know, but but at the same time, we get a chance to look at it and see what we can do about fixing it, right? That's it, man. So, you know, I hope you guys have a a uh, fantastic day, as I like to say. You guys know what that means. Uh, so we're going to go ahead. Let's, let me give you this before we go. A satisfied life is better than a successful life because your success is measured by others. But your satisfaction is measured by your heart, your mind, and your soul. Who told you I need you to fuck with me? Because I fuck with me. But you're going to see me, though, for real, for real. Yeah, that's there. Go ahead and lock the door, right? We out. Perfect grind all the time, baby. Yeah. Cali Vines, baby. <laughs> Perfect grind all the time. Music money. Got a dollar sign. Hub City. I'm a street nigga, streets fuck with me I'ma keep pushing products till the fans get me It's Guap off top, Diamond Cordier That nigga wall won't give a pro bitch the time of day They see me climbing, they see me, they see me shining see me. That's hard work, hard work, proof of grinding New money got me tipping in this 550 I leave bad man and I'm so pretty I got that tech with me, that's my hate Sprayer. Go big, grind now, nigga, play later What can I say, I'm addicted to this paper stocking And I don't talk about it, I just make it happen Shout out to the Melrose Nation, the Melrose Goons, Professor Melly Mill We're gone, lock the door